I'm Eric Nason with Newshooter.com, and we're at NAB 2019, and I'm with Cliff from Sharp. How you doing, Cliff? I'm doing great. So we got a, a lot of play with the uh, new Sharp 8K. What is the official name of the camera? Uh, this is the uh, BC30. Oh, the B30. Now that's that's the small one, right? The yep. pocket style like camera. Yeah. So we're calling the small one the B30, and our our large uh, camcorder the the B60. The full name is the 8C B30A <laughs> and the 8C uh, B60A. So we just call them the B30 and the B60. <laughs> you got, you got a better name, Cliff. You got to do something a little more sexy. <laughs> yeah. Right. We have our own internal names, but let's just go with the B30 for now for our new intro uh, compact camera. Okay. Cool. So uh, we talked about it at CES when we first met, and a lot has changed since then. I think I think we were talking maybe a prosumer consumer camera at that point. Really, still kind of feeling it out. Where is the camera now in the in Sharp's perspective, and where do you see it kind of falling in in place in the market? Right. Um, we view this as a professional camera. Um, what is really groundbreaking is it's a, it's a wonderful price point. The product's going to come in at under $4,000, um, but it is designed for the professional. Now, the definition of that professional has really been changing over the last uh, several years, right? So you have a lot of online video producers these days who are running and gunning and shooting things and need to be very mobile, um, and a compact device is very attractive. Um, we're trying to introduce those, um, those, those folks uh, to the benefits of 8K. Excellent. So, and I guess that makes sense with, you know, the camera is going to have a full-size HDMI, which HDMI is not really considered too professional. Is that going to stay that way? Yeah, we're going to continue to offer an HDMI out, but we also have a USB Type-C output um, for external storage and, of course, the onboard storage to um, uh, SD card. And uh, what is going to be the codex that it's going to record to? What I understand, it's right now it's 8-bit 420, but you, you want to move forward. Obviously, professionals want 10-bit and all those yep. nice color space. Yeah, the, um, so we're offering the H265. Um, and so we're also working on providing other codecs. And it'll probably be a 10-bit camera. Yeah, 10-bit is. is the target for, the, uh, um, for 8K. Excellent. So we had a, a pretty good experience with the camera. I mean, it's still a prototype camera, and it, it, it worked as it should as far as capturing images. Yeah. I, I think probably, I mean, the stumbling blocks really were some of the, the software, the firmware, not there yet. Uh, that's understandable. It actually worked pretty well. However, it was editing that was the problem. So yeah. we used uh, Final Cut 10, uh, most current version. The files, the MP4 files, they didn't get recognized. Uh, earlier version of Premiere Pro, same problem, but the current version of Premiere Pro saw it. Uh, we ended up, because we were trying to hustle to get it done, and working in 8K when you're mobile on laptops at a trade show is very difficult, right. uh, we ended up transcoding to 4K. So uh, talk to me about the workflow that Sharp sees using this camera. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you uh, stepped on a very important point, and one of the sort of themes and objectives of the show this year, we're standing right now in our 8K studio, and so we're offering and encouraging um, a lot of um, video producers to actually use our, uh, our studio, shoot in 8K, we have both our B60 and our B30 camera here, shoot in an 8K, and as you pointed out, right next door we have um, a live editing station, actually several editing stations where we have all of the major software applications running. And as you pointed out, if you're shooting in HD, you could sort of use any tricks and tips that you like and follow any path to produce your video. But when it comes to 8K, you really have to follow a certain path because not all of the applications support 8K in the same way. As you pointed out, there's different file formats that you need to use in order to get it in. And then also sometimes you need to use a proxy file um, or you can transcode it. We recommend that if your hardware is being challenged by it, that you should be using proxy files. Uh, rather than uh, transcoding to 4K, because if you transcode to 4K, you lose the benefits of reframing um, and virtual panning and virtual zooming. Um, so that's what we encourage is folks to come here, shoot a, uh, a short video in 8K, and then work with our engineers over in our live editing studio to figure out what's the right path for you to, to get that 8K to work in your editing system. And what nonlinear systems uh, has Sharp tested out? I mean, obviously, we, we couldn't use the ones I mentioned, although, you know, Premiere Pro 13.1 
uh, did recognize the files. Uh, are there other uh, software NLEs that you've tested right yet? I know this is very early in the game. So we have done our own testing. We haven't worked directly with any of the manufacturers, but we found our paths with Grass Valley, um, Premier Pro, DaVinci Resolve, um, and, uh, and Final Cut as well. Each one of them has their own unique ways to get it, but we're hoping by the introduction of a camera like this that is easily accessible, you know, in the past, prior to the show and a camera like this, it really was a small community of folks who really were able to capture 8K. So the priority of the applications to order, um, to be able to deal with it, you know, was special case by case. Now we, uh, our expectation is that as folks start to see that this is going to be coming to market and a lot of people are going to be using it, the priority of making it work um, uh, right. for those applications is going to grow. Right. So uh, maybe the problem was with us when we used Final Cut 10 was we were using an older OS. We weren't in the most current Mojave. Is that something that users might need to understand? That's right. And that's also something we can talk to you about is the not only the operating system, right, but your CPU and your GPU, right? So there's all sorts of compatibility things that you need to keep in mind, um, which we're trying to do the testing uh, for a lot of folks to figure that out, your proper GPU based on the hardware spec that you have, plus the proper software application. But the technology is there, um, and we're here to help you uh, figure out what's the best combination uh, uh, for, use, for working with 8K. Now, Sharp being fairly new to the game in, in, in 8K cameras, uh, you know, 8K displays, you're all pretty much in with 8K. Is, there, is this sort of like the beginning path for you folks? You're not really going to be making UHD or 4K cameras. Is 8K the beginning for Sharp? Yeah, uh, we're really trying to leapfrog the industry, right? And so, um, as a lot of folks recognize, it's it's a balancing act, right? All of the components of the AK workflow actually have to get implemented, and that's our unique position. We're not just looking at one component, like the camera, um, or even the display, which we have both. We're also looking at the workflow in between. So for a lot of the online community, that workflow is just moving it to a PC, right, and being able to edit it. But for the broadcast community, um, whether it's an internal stadium broadcast, right, for sports and entertainment, or if it's um, eventually broadcast out um, nationwide, um, you're talking about IP transmission, 5G transmission, um, and g generic broadcast transmissions. Um, we're also working on a, a lot of that, and you can see that in our booth today. We're demonstrating a lot of our partners and a, a lot of those codecs and transmission technology that uh, we're really pushing. So you're right, we're trying to raise the whole water level of the entire industry to move to 8K. Fantastic. Anything I haven't asked you about? This, this uh, really, it's an exciting camera. I mean, we're getting a lot of buzz on the side about it. Um, so, you know, there's always these people that think it's, it's the race to the, to the 8K to the 16K is ridiculous and pixels are more important than resolution. I mean, what do you say to people that have that kind of a, an opinion? Because I know, I, we hear it all the time. Right product for the right application, right? So there isn't one product that necessarily covers um, all applications. You know, if you're, um, if you're shooting for image quality, you're doing a lot of landscapes and things like that, and, and beauty shots, you probably want something uh, a little bit different. It's not necessarily the resolution that you're going after in that case. Um, but if you're running gunning and you're trying to capture something a little more dynamically or something that's happening live that you're not really sure whether or not you're going to have the right framing and you need the ability to reframe later on, maybe a higher resolution is what you need and, and AK will uh, something with just AK technology will fit that okay. purpose. All right, Cliff, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate thanks. it. Nice talking to you.